Hey you guys, uh, we're gonna take a, a look at a software program called 5D to RGB um, and some testing as well. You're gonna see uh, the difference between two. Now, first let's talk about DSLR video. It's not really set up to do um, post-processing and video editor, um, primarily because the codec used for compression is very highly compressed H.264. Color space for those uh, DSLR cameras is also not the best, which is at 420, Vice 422, which is considered more of a entry-level broadcast television type of thing. And often video editors um, will use uh, QuickTime to convert the video for you within your uh, video editing package. And QuickTime uh, just uses default settings, not the best ones for post-production for example chroma may be affected and or exposure to give you an example so uh, using 5d to RGB uses the best quality setting uh, settings as possible to get to you the best dynamic range we're gonna uh, I'm going to talk about the video software first conversion software and then I'm going to show you some examples within Final Cut Pro 10 Okay, um, before I go on to the uh, video testing phase, uh, first I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the, the software program 5D to RGB, uh, which is uh, developed by the company Rare Vision, uh, also for their own use, uh, for their own uh, video um, processing, I guess. So we're going to look at some of the features for this, um, some of the main features. Uh, it does support the GPU, which means you're going to have faster rendering. It does support Technicolor CineStyle, which I've talked uh, about before, and we are going to do one video test with that as well to see how well that works. And also, it now supports Apple AV Foundation for ProRes encoding with the newer style QuickTime and newer uh, Mac operating system. And uh, we do have uh, the software application pulled up right now. And... Uh, just to let you know, also know it is 64 bit um, as well. And so, what it does, it converts your DSLR video into mostly ProRes. Uh, you have selection for five of the most commonly used ProRes settings, as well as DPX, which I believe is for um, visual effects or something like that. Now, we do have it set for ProRes 422 for testing, high quality. Source is talking about frames per second. Um, when you select source, it will use whatever uh, frame rate that the video file is using, or you can set it for any frame rate you want. So, supposedly, uh, you take it at 60 frames per second, and you select 30, it'll actually slow down the video, um, depending if you want that or not. I just selected for source. Default decoding matrix, we are using default as well, BT709. Luminous range, uh, two settings for this, full range and broadcast range. Uh, I believe broadcast range may be for color safe uh, for television and movies maybe, I guess that's what that's for. Chroma mode is set for progressive, which is 1080p. Uh, interlaced may be for other settings as well, like 1080i, which uh, is not what it is right now. Post-processing allows you to use color, Technicolor CineStyle if you're DSLR has that picture profile uploaded. We are also going to be doing testing on that as well. Okay, we already uh, did all the uh, test files in several formats, uh, which we have uploaded or imported into Final Cut Pro 10. And we primarily used uh, four different files. Um, this, These two were the ones that we recorded with uh, the uh, Canon T3i DSLR. The first one uh, was imported just using Final Cut Pro 10 and um, QuickTime. Uh, now this picture profile was just set on neutral and this uh, same thing, the conversion was done to Final Cut Pro 10 using the CineStyle profile. And now this one up here was done using uh, 5D to RGB using the neutral picture profile and uh, we're going to be uh, looking at that as well. Now first let's take uh, a look at the CineStyle one 
Now this was converted using the um, software program as well, 5D to RGB. As you can see, it does all the color correction for us. Um, perhaps many people would rather do it manually or using the um, a LUT utility within their uh, video editor. So that's not where we're really um, taking a look at. We're going to check the quality. And to really see that, I'm going to pull up the video scopes. Now I could do um, color correction myself. I'm not very good at it and it's very subtle anyway. Um, so we're just going to look at the video scopes to show you the difference. Uh, to me, that'd be the best way to do it. So we're going to uh, open it up right here. Now this is the one that's done by Final Cut Pro 10. This is the Lumina. Now we're going to check that with the uh, one using the software application. And as you can see, there's much, uh, there is much more wider range. Now we're going to go ahead and check the the RGB parade to see the difference on that as well. And uh, we'll go right here. Now this is the one that's done from Final Cut Pro 10, uh, which is roughly uh, the dynamic range, uh, maybe around 50% dynamic range. Uh, we're going to go here, and as you can see, it's much more wider. Uh, it's going down below. It's um, uh, maybe about 15% all the way to uh, maybe 80%. And uh, as you can see, it does have much more dynamic range, which is what we're looking for. So um, it does have a couple of different versions. Now this is the light version, which you can get for free. And I believe the only limitation is batch processing. So you'll have to do each DSLR video file one at a time. Where the paid version, you can do, I believe, uh, I think it's up to um, 10 uh, batch um, conversion. So uh, check it out if you do use DLSR video for uh, video processing, then you could use uh, software, something like this.